Hey guys, welcome back to Asia Peacekeeper. So for today's video is just my weekly tasking of what I do weekly. So uh, as you can see now, I'm actually doing a water change uh, for my Arowana tank. So uh, I have to replace the filter wool once every 10 days or two weeks, roughly see how dirty it is. Uh, I have just removed the dirty ones. So usually they, are, they will have some flies inside because due to the humidity and the bacteria or the leftover foods uh, being sucked up by the return pump they will be over here so uh, usually it will be quite dirty so usually one or two weeks time yeah, so I'm using this filter booth so mine is a tray version so I just slide it out and put a filter booth in and set it back in yeah so this is much more simpler uh, with the tray version so this tray version is not it's not really recommended for medias because uh, it's more expensive so for media just get a normal one so i'm doing around 40 to 30 percent of water change every week so uh, as you can see the pipe here is linked to the toilet Okay, so uh, it's roughly around there already. So uh, I'll actually make clips by clips and then I will edit together as one video. Uh, Cause I'm doing some water change in between. So uh, I'm afraid that it might go over the required amount. So yeah, so far everything is okay for the fresh water. There's not much things that you need to measure. Uh, just have to fit them and do regular water changes and also replace the filter wool so that the fishes won't get sick from the leftovers because the leftovers tend to rot so it will pollute the water so uh, this is my weekly tasking for the arowana tank so now I'm gonna fill back up the water so uh, hold on a minute okay alright guys so uh, I have already removed about 50% of the water so uh, I do this weekly so usually it's around 30 to 50% depending on how dirty the water is so uh, if you look closely over there I've also removed the wave maker so what I usually do with the wave maker is I turn on the wave maker at this direction so that you stir the water and eventually all the debris is over here <coughs> yeah they will get stuck into the with maker pump but uh, however the with maker pump is already creating enough flow so uh, actually the splashing soil is from this guy already created enough flow so uh, I find it I'm not using the with maker actually so I remo I'm already remove it okay so now I'm just gonna turn on the tap which I already added uh, anti chlorine to the current tank water so this is how I usually do but it's not the right method but that's how I usually do it so uh, once I the anti chlorine I'll just come here and turn on the tap water so I'll turn on around 50% and just let it slowly fill up so at the meantime I'll be putting in the new water wool uh, putting, putting in some salt and also turning on the return pump guys so now it's about full already so uh, usually by this point i'll turn on the return pump why because if the water is over here uh, the return pump will start to splash all the water around so sometimes the water do get into my uh, floor so that's why i will be waiting until around this level so usually after turning on the return pump they will drop a little bit so usually i'll turn off my tap water around here this level okay so uh, just to let you see the water flow she is enough for the tank so uh, depending where you aim so I aim this direction so that you go around the tank yep, so the water flow is like this so uh, as you can see there is water sound so that's why I feel until this level 
so that the water will be covering the hole then there won't be so much sound Alright, so once we reach this level, then I'll just turn it off, keep the hose, and then that's it for my Iwana tank. So usually I will wait 1 to 2 hours before I feed. Uh, try not to feed uh, before a water change. Uh, if you want to feed it, feed it 5 hours after a water change. Uh, just imagine you are running, and then you immediately went to an echo room. Uh, it's something like that because uh, he's still gas gasping for air and more and some more is like the water has higher chlorine because it's directly from the tap so uh, usually I will not feed 2 hours before and 2 hours after I water change so that the water can stabilize first okay so this is all for so, so, sorry this is all for my arowana tank so next I will be proceeding to my living room tank uh, is the angel fish tank alright guys so this is my angel fish tank uh, it's over here so it's actually quite big it's around from top to bottom around maybe 7 inches I bought it uh, when it was a very very small fry so I just keep it here for a, maybe a year or two and it became this size yep, so it's a very easy fish to keep not much demanding just some simple water change so uh, this pump isn't on 24 hours it's only on when we are watching tv or using the internet so this is uh, actually a very low maintenance fish tank so what i usually do is that uh, i will check the base if is it very dirty is there any debris uh, actually i have a modern algae eater here so usually it's getting chased by the angel fish that's why it's always hiding Yep, so usually I will check if there's any uh, debris So if there isn't any I'll turn off the pump Then uh, I will not use the suction pump I will just use a pail To remove the water uh, Two buckets So I remove two buckets And I will put back two buckets So as for the anti-chlorine I will normally do the same I will just dose the amount I needed Into the aquarium uh, let it set for a while and then I'll top up with tap water so uh, I will proceed with the steps and usually I will water plants with this water because it's not really smelly yep okay so this is a demo on how I change without the suction pump I uh, just scoop and place it on the bucket uh, until around this level then I'll go and water the plants or I flush into the toilet then I get a new batch of water so two bucket out to bucket in okay guys welcome back so I uh, removed half of the water which is two bucket so it's a 50% water change uh, I also added anti chlorine so usually I will directly add it in or you can add it into this bucket and stir so how to stir is just like that yeah, So usually I'll just scoop it in one by one To fill back, fill back the water So uh, there's no issue So I've been doing this for years So there's no issue So I'll be sticking it to this way So usually two buckets for me. Alright guys, so uh, I have already filled my water. So usually I will fill it to this level over here. Uh, it's touching the hang on filter. So usually you will lose what you lose water throughout your day as uh, the weather is humid. So it's normal. So now once we are done changing water, you can turn on the pump. So if it happens to be like this, just have to put in some water and you'll be fine. Okay, so 
So everything is running as per normal. So the water is definitely better. So usually I'll do 50%, depending on how dirty it is. So if this water is still very dirty, then you have to clean the filter already. Because uh, I stuff a lot of biomedia inside to keep the bacteria going. So uh, that is why I'm able to perform 50% without using any beneficial bacteria. So now let's go to the salt water tank. All right guys, so this is my salt water tank. So first thing first, get yourself a stool so you can see it here. So usually uh, I will open my sum daily to check the level for the protein schema. So I don't...
Okay, so let's go back. So what I usually do is I'll remove the filter wool first and I'll replace the new one. So I'm um, using one hand, so roughly, roughly. Uh, let me get a tripod. Okay guys, so this is uh, way much better. So usually what I will do is uh, I use this tong over here. So this tong is a plastic tong. So I bought it for 150 at IKEA. So it's recommended if you are use, if you are uh, having a salt water tank because it doesn't corrode. It, it will not rust. Okay, so what I usually do is that you can see over here it's very dirty. So usually I will change this. So I just changed this two days ago and two days later it's like this already. So yeah. So actually this salt water tank is more on daily. Yeah. It's not really a weekly schedule maintenance. But you can drag it a week the most because if you are busy with work then there's nothing we really can do. Uh, because usually all this all these dirty stuff which are not captured, they will still room in the water, but they will later be removed by the protein schemer. So this thing here is only to stop chunks of stuff. So uh, like here, there's this one chunk over here, and if you can see. Uh, so let's remove this. So actually, this is an additional item, because uh, in the filter tray, there's already filter wool inside. So this is an additional one. So uh, the sum is pretty tight because of the auto top off. Uh, as you can see, this is all the gunk from the aquarium. So also the filter wool here. So if you have a lot of copy pots, uh, just make sure that they are not stuck at the filter wool. So usually I will remove them. So now I'm gonna put back the new ones. So once I put it here, I'll just stop them down. Same for this. Okay, so uh I'm afraid that all the debris will go through this so that's why I put an additional one so if it's like this you will definitely hit all the dirt will definitely hit here and slowly you will lift up so if it's, it's best to keep it like this so that uh, you can actually rest it nicely at the edge over here so you have to uh, introduce water to the filter wood so that you have to push it down a bit not even do his job. So this is actually an, an additional filter to check the debris. Okay, so we are done with the So I'm gonna go and throw this first and I'll come back uh, later. Okay, so right guys, so this is the second part of the maintenance. Used to clean the protein schema. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna off the protein schema. Then I will remove the head. Okay, so be careful not to spill anything. Then just put it on a tree. So uh, I'm required to wipe this with a tissue. As you can see, all the junks are stuck here. So, so I'll show you how I usually do it. So just grab a bunch of tissue, maybe two pieces, and just wipe. So this is, it's not really easy to keep a reef tank actually. So there's quite a lot of work. So if you can see here, these are the gunk 
you will receive weekly. So you can actually flush this down the toilet because it's tissue. And make sure you wipe the top also. Because this is where the where the uh, cup will sit to keep all the dirt. Alright, so we are done for this part. So as you can see, it's cleaner. It's way more cleaner. So yeah, this is how we maintain the protein schema. So now I'm gonna wash. So let's go. Okay, Alright guys, so I'm gonna aim my shower head at the basin over here. <coughs> and I'm gonna remove this. So definitely you need, you need to wash your head. So 
so let's go right guys so this process is just putting back so So I put back this tube, just put it in. And also the cover. And can turn it on. So the bubble are skimming. And it's back to working condition. So uh, maybe once every half year you can actually remove the whole thing and also clean the pump so there's actually a pump here yeah, so you have to clean the pump also so for this reactor there's also a pump so as you can see it's quite dirty so it's actually very hard to remove because I got this bio media over here so once you move the medias the water will turn very cloudy because uh, all of the bacteria will be roaming around so uh, it's very difficult to wash so there's actually an easier option but that, that one costs around 2.5% more so that's why I stick back to this so uh, what's inside is biomedias, color chips and also uh, Rowa phosphate remover and also carbon okay so this is the third step is to top up the water so uh, I have water ready for my auto top off so uh, usually I'll just keep them at the aquarium so these are the water so I'll label them as fresh water with anti-chlorine so uh, how to do it is really so simple so you just have to top up up to your desired level okay so let's go some more so usually I'll top up until around this level so one more bottle It's actually fine to uh, fill it to the brim, but the problem is that mosquito might be because it's a fresh water. So uh, usually I'll just try to keep it half, half full, so that mosquito won't breed it. Okay, guys. So this is basically the sump maintenance. So this is the only the sump part. So uh, if you are not really go for salt water. You actually have to measure the pH and also the salinity is over here. This is the gauge. Uh, you can see the number. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up. Yeah, as you can see this table over here, this chart over here. Yeah. So what we do is we put salt water here, close it, and then we use our eye to see it, to see the level of salinity. So this is part of the baby check also. So other than this, uh, fish, they will eat fish food. But for corals, they need calcium, they need uh, magnesium and alkalinity. So uh, you can see the corals here are already messed up, so I have to adjust it later. Because some of the fish like to disturb the corals, especially this, this clownfish. Yep, so you see? He's always doing this, pushing all the corals around. 
Yeah. So uh, we also have to measure. So there's test kits over here. So calcium, car alkalinity, and magnesium is the most important. So uh, mostly I will just measure those three. So for phosphate, nitrate, and everything else, uh, I do weekly water change. So there's not much issue. So uh, as long as all the corals are doing fine, you are doing good. So uh, those trees are the usual weekly maintenance I do for this reef aquarium. So uh, other than this, I will do a water test and then I'll add calcium. So the calcium are like this. They are in powders. So there's powder form and liquid form. So usually I'll add a liquid. So you have to check the three measurements to see if the water is actually okay for the corals. Cause a single coral is not cheap. It range from fifteen all the way to two three hundred dollars. So I bet you wouldn't risk the take the risk to skip the checks. So usually calcium is what they consume to grow. Okay, guys. So this is almost. This is what I do every weekly for my aquariums so uh, it's actually very time consuming so the whole thing will take me one to two hours depends on how fast i do so yeah so actually this is the wiring system so there's a lot of thing to keep this tank running so it's not really easy to keep a saltwater tank so actually there's a lot of money spent here too okay guys so this comes to an end for the video on how I maintain my three fish tanks. So uh, if you like this video, please let me know. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you find this video interesting, or you want to show your friend what it takes to keep fish tanks at home, show him this video too. So if you think this video is helpful and is good, please share it around with your friends. Uh, give a thumbs up, give a like, and share my video. So uh, please remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again. Cheers.